So the only thing that we need to know to solve this exercise is to recall Newton's second law, which says that the net force acting on a body is going to be equal to its mass times its acceleration. And we want to know, we, we have to know also the expression for the kinetic one dimension of motion. So we have that. The, for a one dimensional motion, we have that the position as a function of time is going to be equal to the initial position plus the initial velocity times t plus the one half of the body's acceleration times t squared. Okay, so these are the uh, only equations that we have to know in order to solve the exercise. So let me highlight them. So in this exercise, let's suppose that we have a car that is going down on a road that is slightly tilted by an angle of 4.8 degrees. And we know that the total length of this road is 301 meters. Okay? Now, suppose that the car starts sliding down from the rest. We want to find what is going to be the... We want to find how long it will take for the car to travel from the top of the road to the bottom. So, to solve this, we have to find... The first thing that we have to do is to uh, find the forces that are acting on the car. So, let me do uh, another draw here, another drawing here. So, I'm very exaggerating a lot this angle. And we have the car here. So, uh, in the exercise, we're asked to neglect uh, friction forces. So, the only force that is going to act is going to be the gravitational force that is going to push the car downwards towards the center of the Earth. And we're also going to have a normal force from the surface of the road acting on the car, preventing it from sinking like this. Okay, and this is the normal. So, the uh, considering this as my x and y axis for this problem okay i'm going to put my 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 coordinate system in the in the block referential so we have a projection oh sorry okay so we have a projection of the weight on the uh, y direction, w, y, and we're going to have a projection of the weight onto the x direction, w, x. Okay? And this is going to be the angle of the road. Now, let's look at Newton's second law for the y direction. So for the y direction, we have that the sum of the forces have to be equal to m times the uh, acceleration on the y direction. But since we know that the car is not floating above the road or sinking in the road, we know that n minus wg is equal to zero. For the x direction, however, we have that Wx is going to be m times the acceleration in the x-axis, which is going to be, in the end, the only acceleration on the body. So Wx is going to be equal to mg, which is the weight times the sine of the angle. So substituting by the values given by the exercise, and also noticing that we can cancel out the mass of the car, 
we have that the acceleration is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared times the sine of 4.8, which is 0 0.088. Which is going to give us an, ac an acceleration of 0 0.82 meters per second squared. Okay, now we can use the acceleration felt by the body and apply it to the equation of the 1D motion because, well, we can do this because the car is going to only move in the direction of the road. So for the motion along the road, we have that x of t is going to be equal to the initial position, which is 0, plus the initial velocity times t, which is also 0, plus 1 half of the acceleration, 0 0.82, times the time squared. And we want to find the time it will take for the uh, car to travel 301 meters. So we just substitute this in the left side. So we have 301 times 2 divided by 0 0.82. And the square root of everything is going to be equal to the time that we want to find which is going to be equal to 27.1 seconds. Now in question B, we want to find what is going to be the velocity of the object when it reaches the end of the road. So the expression for velocity in the in a one dimensional motion is that the velocity as a function of time is going to be equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times t. So we know that in our case, the initial velocity is zero. We have that v of t is going to be 0 0.82 meters per second squared times the time. So since we want to find the velocity when it reaches the end of the road, we want to find the velocity at the time of 27.1 seconds. So it's this times 27.1, which is going to give us a velocity of 22.22 .22 meters per second. 